Hello everybody and welcome to today's show from Bicotic and today we're looking at a whole bunch of mountain bikes from Canyon and the reason for this have I mentioned I've got back into mountain biking after a three or four year hiatus I've actually bought a new mountain bike and here's a little clue of the box turning up and boy was it difficult to get it up the stairs stick around to the end of the video and I'll show you what I bought and another clue it's not a Canyon so part of the reason I decided to make this video was while looking for my new bike it struck me at the bewildering amount of mountain bikes that we can now buy. So I thought what we'd do today is go through the different mountain bikes that Canyon have on offer and compare their specs and see why you'd buy them and what you'd use them for. So I thought we'd look at bikes around the £3,000 marker. And this is our first bike from Canyon, the Sender 5. And as you can probably tell, this is our full-blown downhill mountain bike. We've got the dual crown fork and we've got the tiny little seven-speed cassette on the back. At no point a canyon ever expecting you to pedal this up a hill. You will need to book an uplift or get pushing. So let's compare the Sender 5 to the Torque 6. And this is the Torque 6 here. They've actually got quite a similar stance going on, but the Torque 6 has a single crown fork and quite a different rear suspension set up here. The sender is obviously a lot more burly, got a much more chunky linkage and a coil shock going on there. Also of note, clearly on the torque, Canyon are expecting you to pedal this bike. We've got a big old cassette on the back and I've just realised that I probably should have done the torque 5, which actually is 2749 I think. And the sender is absolutely bang on 3 grand. And as is the times we're living in, the bikes are completely sold out, both of them. So here we go, I'm making a video about a bunch of bikes you can't actually buy. Both bikes are aluminium, sender has got the 200mm dual crown front forks whereas the torque has got the 180 front forks. Sender a little bit heavier, both pretty porky as you'd expect for big old downhill bike. So the Sender bomb proof downhill rig and the Torque 6 trail enduro downhill you choose. So it's a gravity bike that blurs the boundaries. And the Sender has absolutely no uphill gears at all whereas the Torque is 12 speed and comes with a 1051. Now what is interesting and this seems to be a thing these days is manufacturers are barely even bothering to tell us what size wheels these bikes have on them and if you search both of these websites there's absolutely no mention of what size wheels either of these bikes have got and I mention it now because I'd completely forgotten about this and then I loaded up the next bike which is the Strive CF7 and obviously immediately realized that the Sender and the Torque are 27.5 wheels and obviously the Strive CF7 has got 29ers. And actually when you fade between the two, you suddenly realize what a massive difference there is between 29 and 27.5 wheels. And if you remember, we used to have 26 inch wheels. And if we fade through here to a Commencel Meta SL3 with 26 inch wheels, and this was available in 2013, it looks like a tiny little kid's toy. It's a nice looking bike, but look at those tiny little wheels. So I thought it would be interesting to do a quick demo of why we have moved up to bigger wheels from the 26. So that's a 26 there. From my understanding, the bigger the wheel, the less it falls into the holes on the trail. So if I play this little animation here, the 26 wheel, boink, falls into the hole. The red one is the 27.5 wheel. That falls in the hole like so. And then the black one is a 29er. And as you can see, that does fall in the hole. However, it falls in the hole quite a lot less than the 26. And actually, the 27.5 is closer to the 26 than it is to the 29. So one of my criteria for my trail bike was that I was going to go for a 29er. So maybe the 29er is the sweet spot for the size of a trail bike wheel. But I thought maybe I'd try a penny farthing wheel. Oh yeah. Look at that. That's going to be super comfortable, isn't it? Hail the penny farthing trail bike. Okay, now that we've sorted all that out, let's get back to the Strive CF7. This is the bottom of the range for the Strive. Clearly a carbon bike and is a bit outside the budget for this video at 3499. So the Strive is designed as an enduro race bike. And if we compare that to the Torque, which can be used as an enduro race bike, you can obviously see they're quite different. 
This drive's got its 29 inch wheels and it also has something called shapeshifter technology which means that you can press a button and change it between an uphill and a downhill geometry. Fading between the drive and the torque here I would say it was set to the uphill geometry here but that's just a guess because obviously the torque is a lot slacker in that photo. You can see here how having the 29 inch wheels sure lifts up the bottom bracket and the rear axle. Personally I'm not a huge fan of the upside down rear shock. I think that's probably just because I'm so used to seeing them up the other way around. And the drive comes with a 170mm front fork and is coming in a little bit lighter at 15.61 kilograms. So the next bike up is the Spectral 29CF7. And again this is quite above our budget at 3599 carbon frame and again fading to the drive. It looks slacker, but again, I'm assuming the drive is in its uphill geometry here. All of these bikes are coming with dropper posts other than the sender, which presumably you never actually sit down on. It's amazing how dropper posts are now completely standard. It seems like not very long ago that they were a bizarre new thing that a lot of people thought were ridiculous. Now I use my dropper post pretty much as much as I use my gears, really. And if we look at the Strive and the Spectral side by side, the Spectral's another hundred quid. I moaned once because you couldn't buy a Canyon in monthly installments. They've changed that now. However, the smallest monthly installment you can buy this on is £599. So that's quite painful. Again, you can't buy any of these bikes right now coming in winter. So that's great. And the Spectral is coming with a 150mm front fork. A little bit lighter again, 14.16 kilograms. Now when I first got into trail riding, I was always tempted by the bikes with the longer travel. They just look meaner and more aggressive. But as it says here, the Spectral, perfect everyday trail bike. I almost wonder whether 150 is too much for a trail bike. So I think a bike with a 170mm front fork, your race is going to have to be pretty gnarly. Because you've always got to pedal it back up the hill. They've both got the RockShock forks, except that the Strive has gone for the Lyric and the Spectral has got the Pike. Both 12 speed, but the Spectral has got a 1052 and the Strive an 1150. That gives the Spectral a bigger range of gears there. Now then, you can get a cheaper Spectral. The Spectral 27.56. Clearly you've got the smaller wheels, but the bike Seems a bit shorter, definitely not a slack at the front. So looking on the website, again, out of stock, but the 27.56 version is quite a bit cheaper because it's also made of aluminium, 2949. So that's your cheaper option if you want to go for a Spectral. Next up is the Neuron CF8. Now this is what I always think of in the Canyon Reins as their actual trail bike. 29 inch wheel, carbon frame, dropper post, and it's got the RockShock Pikes on it. And if we look at the website and compare that to the Spectral 27.5, the Neuron CF, so carbon frame 8, is 2999, so very comparable prices. Unbelievably, there is actually a small size available for delivery, so you might actually get that one before the end of the year if you happen to be a size small. And the Neuron's coming in at 14.06 kilograms, and it's got a 140mm front fork, which to me sounds about right for a trail bike. It's actually the RockShock Pike Select, whatever that means. And we've got the SRAM NX Eagle 12 speed versus the Shimano SLX 12 speed. And I'm not quite sure how you work out this percentage here, but the SLX is 510% gear range and the Eagle is 520. So bigger numbers are always better, right? So that's the Neuron CF8 and that seems like a pretty good value carbon trail bike to me. And then next up, the Lux CF6. This is our cross-country race bike. As you can see, it's carbon and it's quite a lot more highly strung than the Neuron with pretty racy geometry. Got an upside down dropper post with not much drop. And if you're gonna ride this bike off-road, you're probably gonna be wearing Lycra, let's be honest. This mountain bike is not for you if you wanna wear baggy shorts. Quick look at the pricing. The Lux is coming in at 
3299, so a bit above our budget. It's got 110 mil fork and is coming in at quite a light 12.11 kilograms. So quite a lot lighter and a fair bit less travel. But this bike's all about speed and racing. Now up until yesterday, the 20th of August 2021, that was it for the different categories of Canyon mountain bikes. And I was literally about to record this video when this popped up on my feed. It's the Lux Trail CF6. And what we've got here is the racy Lux, but it's been stretched out and slackened off. And do you know what they're calling this? They're calling this a down country. And I mean, what the bleep? What the bleep does that mean? I've never even heard of a down country mountain bike. Where have I been? So what does that mean? Is it a cross country bike or a trail bike? And how do you decide which one to buy now? And if we check out the website, there it is, the Lux Trail CF6. New, actually a bit more expensive, 3349. And can you believe it? There's actually, well, there's one available of the Lux in September, and you could actually get a new Lux Trail in the next three days if you're a medium size. That's amazing. So it's got 120 mil fork as opposed to 110. Somehow, even though it's a little bit longer, it's a tiny bit lighter. And it says here, your perfect choice to get started in the adrenaline filled world of XC racing is the Lux and the Lux trail is cross country and downhill down country outstanding climbing efficiency and plenty of descending capability to match the Lux trail CF6 delivers it all in spades I don't know why we want it in spades but funnily enough I've read a very similar thing about a trail bike so still a bit confusing so what if we offer the Lux Trail up to the Neuron? What actually is the difference between a down country and a trail bike? Well, here we go. Fading between the two. Well, similar stance, I think you could say, other than we zoom in up the front here. The front of the Lux is a little bit lower down to keep you in that sort of racy position, I guess. All around the back here, it's all quite similar. Front wheels is kind of in the same place. Likewise, the saddle. So are they going to feel pretty similar? Who knows? Leave a comment down below if you have an opinion on that. Anyway, there we go. That's the Lux Trail CF6. And I quite like it. As ever, it's probably the tan walls that are making me like it, but yeah, I like it. So it was at this point here where I thought it would be cool to actually look at these bikes pointing downhill. And that will give us a good insight as to how the designers set these bikes up in descending mode. And I know it's not quite right because there's no rider on it and the sag's not set up, but I thought it'd be interesting to have a look. So that's the sender there. And you can see how the front wheel pushes out, getting these forks up as straight as possible. Almost like an animal putting its legs out in front of it as it goes down the hill. And then the torque, very similar stance like we saw at the beginning. But you can see here why we need the dropper post. With the seat up like that from pedaling up the hill, if you then start descending with the seat up in the air, any little bump and the saddle is constantly trying to push you over the front of the bike. Which, of course, is not what you want. So you're much better off putting the saddle down. That way you can get your weight much lower and hopefully not go over the bars. Here's the Strive, although I think this is probably set to uphill geometry because here we have the Spectral 29er and you can obviously see that slacker and longer there. Quite interesting if we compare that to the Sender. That's not a million miles off, is it? Obviously the different size wheels. Here's the 27.5 Spectral. So it's obviously quite a lot shorter. Not a slack. I'd rather be on this one. And then the Neuron. Again, not the slack in fact that's pretty similar to the 27.5 spectral isn't it and then it's the Lux cross-country bike and you can see there how that flings you over the front in an aero position and you're gonna have to be pretty brave to take this downhill if it gets pretty gnarly and rocky and here's the new Lux trail so you can see there exactly what they've done they've stretched it out a bit to give you a nicer feel going downhill there we go, that's a look at all the Canyon mountain bikes pointing downhill. Hopefully that was useful. And as I mentioned at the beginning, I've bought a new mountain bike. And here's a little peek inside the box. Definitely not a Canyon. Can you tell what it is yet? It's got a stem, it's got some bars. It's got a whopping great cassette on it. Maybe you've guessed by now, it's a Vitus. Or however you say that, Vitus, Vitus. 
and I've bought the Vitus Mythique 29 VRS. It's an aluminium bike. It comes with a cable actuated dropper, fusion suspension, and I gotta be totally honest with you, the reason I bought this one, well, there was two reasons I bought this. Number one, it was a relatively cheap 1,649.99, and they had my size in stock, which was a pretty big deciding factor. I took it out for its first spin last night in the local woods. Pretty rocky, some quite steep descents we've got here, and I was super impressed with how it rode for the money. Everything worked really well. I love the Magic Mary on the front. I think for this type of money, I mean, wow, that's a great set of tires, and it pedals uphill really, really well. I was really impressed with how well it pedaled uphill. It's not light, it's 15 kilos, but so far, I'm super happy with this bike. Super happy that I only had to spend that much money. And the only thing I'm not super happy about is I live in a flat and now it's covered in mud. And somehow I'm gonna have to clean it with baby wipes. But we'll leave that for another day. If you like this video, give it a like. If you've got anything that you wanna discuss, put it in the comments down below. And if you haven't already, help the channel and subscribe. Until next time.